Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Not Too Complicated 2. How are you guys doing today? How's life? Today we need to start the episode by doing a few small automations. We still have free P2P tunnels, so let us take one. And we need a connection right over here. The things that we want to automate are different types of plates, wires, as well as rods. We can obviously make different types of plates inside the multi-servo press, that is the default recipe, but if we use a cast from Tinker's Construct and a Blast Chiller, that's going to be much faster. So for example, I can say one sand equals one clear glass. I should be able to put the pattern inside the interface, and if I order 100, nothing happens. A you're a phytogenic insulator. My bad, we need a magma crucible. So we are going to get molten glass. The molten glass goes inside the blast chiller and we can just import it into our system by having an ender chest on top. That's what we are going to do for everything. Very good, we can get clear glass, any kind of plate, rods and wires. That means if I want to make more solar panels, making the coils are not going to be a problem, also different machines, and it works really fast. However, one more thing that we need to do are different types of mob drops. Because I'm making a lot of black iron ingots, I'm going through blaze powder at an insane rate. Also, for some reason, blitz powder has a singularity, as well as blizzes. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, mob cages are not gonna cut it. We need mystical agriculture. Means that I have to use my stupid sword again, <laughs> but okay. Here is a blaze. We don't really need to do this a lot, so basically what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna cheat. We're gonna spawn them in this room. I need four jars in my hot bar. Spawn me some blazes. That's too much. One thing that I did is that I put insanium apples on auto crafting and I don't have a recipe. Oh my goodness, they're out. And we killed them. Can someone explain to me why the hell did I do that? Let's not make the same stupid mistake. Uh, this time we get the apples first. It is time for a blizz and we just get a bunch. Enough. Oh, we got a heart. We got two hearts! Aha! Oops, can I empty you? Yes. Now we need to do the same thing for blitzes and I was hoping with the mecha suit I don't get shocked. But I do. So this is fun. 55 seconds. That's stupid. Yeah, I can't even hit them. We wait for them to despawn. And I guess what I need to do is that I need to do this one by one. Yep. I wait 5 seconds. I go in. I can go in. Don't shock me. Thank you. Yay! Oh, it's only six. Okay, it's not that bad then. I mean, it's not great. This mod pack seems very easy, but appearances can be deceptive. The end game is just going to be terrifying. Just as an example, I wanted to make a few flux points and then I noticed we have a singularity for a redstone flux cell frame. Aha, this guy. I did count how many ultimate singularities we are going to need. I think we need around 12. Just to be safe, we are going to make 16. But we are going to need 160,000 of the frames. And well, another one of those singularities that we have to make is the Experience Pearl Mark IV. Again, we are going to need 120 to 160,000 of them. And how much do we have? We have only 10,000 of the three times compressed. I'm gonna need a million. And my main problem is that crafters are not working fast enough. Uh, this is one crafter, this is another crafter, we have another crafter, and there's one more crafter at the base. And this is the speed that we're getting Mark III, so... I think it's garbage. So maybe I have to do an overhaul of our farm? I don't know. Yeah, we have to do that. There's no other way. We remove everything. And by everything, I did not mean the platform. Oh boy, uh, that took maybe an hour or so, but our production has been increased by a lot. My biggest challenge was to keep the ender chest empty and, well, you can see the piping. It's nothing super fancy, I just changed the spacing and added a few more botany pots for experience. And for crafting those experience seeds into compressed experience, well, we do have a lot of crafters and entangled blocks with crafters. But I think now we are getting it at a decent rate, it's like 2 or 3 every second. You can't really go higher than this, it's like impossible. Also, I just noticed that we are at 1.03 trillion EMC and fading matter is not that far away. A few million more? Or maybe billion? I don't know. <laughs> also, just in case you're curious, I divided the work between different types of crafters. For example, this crafter only makes experienced droplets. And this crafter only makes experienced pearls. This crafter combines everything. And then since I'm making too many droplets, well, I do have additional crafters to do the job. Also, I was kind of running out of sides and uh, this is why we have a lot of entangled blocks. 
Oh, I just literally came to our base and we can make a fading matter. It's just that I don't really know what to do. Uh, what kind of matters did we make? Yeah, that does make sense. We went as high as blue. So here is cyan. Then we need to make some fuel. So this is cyan fuel. Green fuel. And with green fuel, we can make yellow. Lime. Lime is a color. Green matter. Lime matter. This is almost 6 billion EMC. Wow. Lime should give us yellow. Yellow should give us orange. And here is the fuel. We're getting close. So I just made the white fuel, white matter, and we can make literally one fading matter. That's pathetic. Well, so why did I run out? It says that fading matter has a value of 1.04 trillion EMC, right? Here is the same number. I will take three white matters and I cannot take six white fuels. So we're losing EMC. I can take one more. Uh, do I get anything as a reward? That's a bit of EMC. Not really. <laughs> 2 billion for us is nothing at this very moment. But in any case, here is the final white fuel. And ladies and gentlemen, a fading matter. Oh, <laughs> you give me 8 as a reward. I love you. So we have 9.4 trillion EMC. That's stupid. I just used the calculator. Yes, the numbers do match up. And this is the actual exact number. And this is the part that we were missing. It was not showing it on the screen. So yeah, that's it. 58 billion or something. Another thing that I wanted to do before moving on to our next project is that I think every episode we should start automating a few of the singularities. Because you know, there's 81 of them and of course some of them do have EMC, for example aluminium is going to be easy peasy, but most of them are going to be incredibly complicated. 16 million ME storage component, neutronium ingots, universal mass, which we don't even have it, or blue matter. Or transistors. Since I just noticed that redstone flux cell frame is also in the singularity list, uh, let's start with this one. I'm also sure that, yep, we don't have the resources to do that. So here is a ton of lead, a ton of silver, and I don't know, can you make me a thousand? I'll be right back. We wait. Actually, I do remember that in the comments of the previous episode, uh, somebody suggested that we use fading matter as an EMC battery in the energy condensers. It's not really like Project Ozone, so if I use fading matter, that's 10% of my total EMC inside an energy condenser. So I think the best option for the moment is that we just give them half a stack of blue matter, that should be more than enough. Because numbers are just ridiculous, this is 151 million. And this is 512. It has been a while and I think we have all the resources. We cannot craft it because our CPUs are garbage. It's okay, I have been checking and it seems 64k is not the maximum. Now we have stupid stuff like 16 million. Maybe we should get a few of them. I don't know what I did with my recipes. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's okay, we have the CPUs. So can you now make me 1000 of them? Yes, that's like 0.8% of what we need. So it's gonna take some time. You know, one of my biggest problems in life is that I don't really pay attention to numbers. I did mention that these 1000 frames that we're going to make are almost 0.8% of the entire thing that we need, right? This stupid thing does require 218,000 electrum ingots. And this is the speed that I'm making it. I thought it's not necessary to have a botany pot for every single alloy, but maybe for electrum, uh, we should make an exception. I have made the seeds and, well, the situation is not great. Maybe for the moment, as a temporary measure, we're going to have three more seeds. Is it any better? Yeah, not the worst. So maybe while I'm building a supply of Electrum, we do another singularity. This is what we should do. Always troubleshoot. Yeah, we're going to start with 1000 fluid cells. Again, that's 0.8% of what we need. <laughs> it's nothing. I would like to mention that on a very positive note, uh, the machine we made with the ultimate ingot is working really fast. Yeah, this is stupid. <laughs> Stupidly fast. I think we are going to need at least one more, but that's something that we will do later on. Not today. It has been quite a while later and unfortunately you can't really say how long it has been by looking at my EMC levels because, well, we're increasing it by millions and we're up to trillions. So it could take like 4 hours until that number moves. <laughs> Anyhow, as I have already mentioned, we do have a singularity for the 16 million ME storage component and the problem was Lazier AE2. Not that there is a huge problem, it's just that I thought my patterns were wrong, but even if you put the interface on blocking mode, it's still going to pump in items and then the circuit etchers are going to get confused and not craft the items. It was more or less the same problem that I had with the chemical combiner. So what I did is that, well, we do have more circuit etchers. And now if I want to craft them, it's easy. I just had to separate the patterns, that's it. 
Also, this guy is causing lag. If I give you more quartz, will you shut up? Good. I think it had too many light updates. So while everything is cooking up, we are looking for a few mobs. Actually, only one. We want to transmute him. Ideally, we want to have a husk. That will do. I wanted a drowned. Be a husk. Of all the things you could have been, an enderman. You're a husk. Come with me. I had no idea you can get a drowned. That's good. So the reason that we wanted a husk as well as a drowned is that we need different types of zombie head. We need the normal zombie head in order to make the zombie electrode. We need the zombie electrode, drowned head, as well as a husk head in order to make the Z-Logic controller. And of course we need the Z-Logic controller in order to make energy collector mark 2. I am really and truly sorry, ignore whatever I just said, we're not going to use mob cages. We need the actual zombie. And I will explain to you in a moment. Yes, zombie. So as I have already mentioned, yes, we are going to need the Z-Logic controller in order to make Energy Collector Mark II, and I thought we don't really need that many of them. Because, you know, the main use of these guys is to make the different flowers for generating EMC. However, for the Energy Collector Mark III, which is incredibly expensive, we also have a singularity. So yeah, we need quite a bit of heads. How did I get in here? Yes, now what we need to do is to gather some zombie juice. I guess apples will help. Yep. How many do I have to kill? 10. Okay. I had a very grand plan today and unfortunately it's going down the drain. Uh, we need small automations and we need space. So I think we're going to expand this wing of the base just by a bit. So we're going to need four additional pots. One of them is going to be for zombies, endermen, water and dirt. I'm hoping you will put the correct one inside. Oh, they're off. I don't really want to have cables over here because I cannot cover them, but if we use P2P tunnels, then I can use a facade. So I just smack you with a universal cable, we give you a flux point, and we copy you to these guys. I am going to connect this using a fiber to our applied energistic system, but for the moment it does need power. So yeah. Okay, we get dirt, we get water, everything is fine. Eh, we just lock them, just in case. For crafting different heads, we are also going to need soulstone cobblestone. Cause you know, we need to make this blank skull and it does need soul dust. So I am going to use an igneous extruder with one cobblestone. Uh, water and lava, do you work? <laughs> yes, yes. Good, we have all the ingredients. So a few episodes ago, we also made a ton of emi controllers. Uh, let us complete our controller. I can vein mine you, right? Yes, very good, it's complete. I had to do some rewiring down here and add a few more P2P tunnels. On this side, we are going to have a few machines, so it does make sense to have a P2P tunnel and a dense cable. The part where I'm not really happy with is that I have to use a storage bus. I never liked them. But I'm guessing we should have access to these drawers. Yes, good. And somehow I need to connect you to power. Yeah, that works. So I can remove you. I really didn't have to do that. It's okay. Who cares? Uh, let us also get some bone into the system. That sounded weird for some reason. So a few patterns for soul dust, the blank skull, recipe for zombie head, husk head, drowned head, and obviously enderman head. Okay, over at this wing, there are a few things that we need to do. When I was making the frames, I did notice that we're missing clear glass. We can craft it, but this is the maximum speed and it's not great. You know, that's it. It's fully upgraded. So what we're going to do is that we're going to have two more blast chillers, if you can craft them one day. Uh, we're going to have two more magma crucibles. It's a good thing I have them on auto crafting. And unfortunately, what I don't have on auto crafting is the export bus. We're going to export sand into the magma crucible that is going to make us molten glass. I brought some upgrades. The blast chiller is going to make us clear glass and we're going to import it back into the system. So are we good? Yeah, that's fine. The hope is that they're going to constantly work. Also, when I was making the 16 million ME storage components, I ran into another problem. Pure Certes Quartz. It does not have an EMC. And yes, I did order 50,000 of it, but if I want to order more, this is the speed that we're making it. Which is not really great. So I think what we're going to do is that we're going to have an enrichment chamber which is going to be dedicated to making Pure Certes Quartz. And I guess he can go over there? Yeah, why the hell not? So we are going to export Certes Quartz and... Uh, are you gonna make it? Yes, it needs upgrades. I guess it doesn't really matter, but for importing it back into our system, we can use an interface and one cable. Are you gonna be fine? Yes. I'm hoping this guy will also constantly work and we're not going to run into any problems. 
If we do run into a problem, I can add one more. Then we have to move on to lazier AE2. We're going to have two more circuit etchers. You're facing the incorrect way, like so. Two more interfaces. And I think we have enough channels. Yeah, 17. Yeah, I didn't have to do that. This is okay. I really want to have a different machine for every single pattern. With these two, we should be good. So now that I have ordered 100 more wafers, there should not be any hiccups. But there are going to be hiccups if you don't configure them. <laughs> yes, this is much better. One more issue that you might notice, which happens a lot, is that we're not blocking the items fast enough. I mean, converting them into blocks. The person responsible for them are the molecular assemblers and, well, this is their speed. You can't increase it. So in order to speed things up, I think what we should be able to do is that we use crafters from RF tools. Uh, we're going to have 10 of them. There are so many things that we have to craft using molecular assemblers that I think 10 is not an overkill. If I can place them, yes. All of them are going to need an interface like so, and we just connect it to our system. This part, I'm not exactly sure if it's going to make any difference or not, but let us give it a test. Let's order 100 blocks of aluminium. How long is it going to take? That was maybe 7 or 8 seconds? We're going to use each crafter for 3 recipes. So uh, this one will be for aluminium and we're going to have multiple recipes, you know, so that it does work faster. We're also going to use it for lead as well as redstone. Also, just in case you remember everything, you should. So now the question is, how do we take it out? You know, I mean the output. Um, we can do this, I guess. Yes, we're going to use the universal pipe with one of the connections going into an interface. Yeah, but then you're not going to input the power. I'm not sure, let's try. No, it's not gonna do that. Well, I thought the logical thing to do is to use entangled blocks. I can power them as well. I threw away the patterns that we already had and well, now we need to make new patterns and these ones have to be processing. Because molecular assemblers are no longer crafting them, they're going into a machine. So I don't know, let us order 1000 blocks of aluminium and see if it works. Work faster. I was hoping you would pump it in faster. It's significantly better because we're halfway done, but I was expecting more. But I guess that is the limit on how fast applied energy sticks can input items in. Uh, what other blocks do we have? Pure certus quartz, obviously. Gold is also important, as well as charged certus quartz. For the moment, I did set up additional patterns for silicon, electrum, and copper. And last time when I was making the frames, I went through hell. You know, these 1000 that we made. Uh, now if we want to make 1000 more, how fast are you going to be? Yeah, I would like to mention it's stupendously fast. I know that I already have the glass, uh, I meant the blocks. That was a good change. I thought maybe we should spice things up. Um, instead of making one block, we're gonna make a recipe for nine. Now if I want 10,000 blocks of aluminium, it should be nine times faster. Where is it? Oh, it's the wrong one. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> That's stupid. Yeah, it's really stupid. Okay. We do it with everything. I just wanted to show you the difference in speed. Uh, this is how fast I'm making frames. It's like 6 per second? Well, that will solve a lot of issues. I ordered 4000 more frames and yes, it's slowing down because we ran out of glass, but it's almost ready. But when I was editing the footage, I did notice that we are running very short on time. So I thought instead of doing a project, we do my office or bedroom. I need somewhere to sleep. Oh, and by the way, I stole this one from the nether. I have no idea what it does. That looks bad. <laughs> yeah, we go with the skull and the wither. For the food, since I'm incredibly lazy, we're going to have a netherite barrel, which I should be able to fill it in with beef. Yeah, this is my stupid cooking station. But one more thing that I really want to add to this place is the QIO network. Last episode we got polonium, so I put everything on auto crafting, so this should be easy peasy. The drives look incredibly cool, so let's make six of them. We cannot make the super massive one that requires antimatter. I wanted to get antimatter today, but we got distracted. So we just get the next best thing. That was expensive. Wow. Oh, the drives don't stack. For automating the chemistry mod, I think I want to use the QIO network. So one of them we're going to use as a backpack, the other one for chemistry. Of course, the backpack is going to be purple. You get one drive, that should be more than enough. Your frequency will be the same. Nice. Yeah, a backpack is fine, but these guys look way cooler. I love this. Obviously, I'm not going to use more than one drive for my backpack, but for the chemistry mod, we will have quite a few. But on a very positive note, at least I have a place to sleep. 
And I did discover a fly, and I think since they are passive mobs, maybe we can stop them from spawning? This is called a dread lamp, and it should stop passive mobs from spawning. That is the hope, I really hate flies. I did place a bunch, uh, let's wait for them to despawn, and go back. I don't see anyone on the map. It worked. Nice. Yeah, seriously, all the flies are gone. I'm so happy. But just before we wrap up, let's do something very important as well. Slice and splice. We're going to need dark matter shears and dark matter axe. How do you make them? Ooh, it's a very good thing that I automated the opinion course and I don't have coal. It's fine, we get a bunch. Yeah, now we're good. This is like the best machine. I did call it the best machine ever, but that took a bit of time. Anyhow, we are going to have two dark shears and two dark axes because I want to make two of them. I think we are going to need it. So pink slime, steel plates and two crafting tables. Can I make it? Yes, perfect. You guys come over here. Nice. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.